success that she began to get help for her son. Well, it's only me pushing. Otherwise, it would have it would have gone. Uh, you know, it would. I don't know where I would have been. But it's only me because I phoned him up and said that my son has come out of Afghan. He's come out of the army. I need help for him because I can't cope. I'm tearing my hair out. I don't know what to do with him. Michael was diagnosed with PTSD when he went into a residential unit run by combat stress in Shropshire. The charity does not have any centres in Wales. It's not probably so much the psychiatrist you're talking to, it's probably the people who've been in the same situations as you. That's where you get most of treatment from, I reckon. The majority of veterans we look after are men. Uh, men have great difficulty talking about physical problems, let alone talking about their mental ill health. Um, the other thing to add into the mix is the military, psychi the military psyche. Uh, the, the military has a, an, has a culture of can do, get on, crack on with it, and it's got to in order to deliver the very difficult work that it does. Um, I think there is a lot of stigma still attached to mental ill health generally. Um, and there's also a lot of pride that comes with um, service men and women. The Welsh Assembly Government has given £60,000 over five years to combat stress. By contrast, this national charity based in Bangor receives no funding from Wales. I find it very sad that my countrymen cannot be treated here unless we can rob Peter to pay Paul. We occasionally can put somebody through if we've got a group here and they're funded, we can try and run a local veteran in parallel, but he will be unfunded. Pathways offers a psychological approach to helping veterans who have a full assessment and can stay at this home for six weeks. All the caseworkers have a military background. We run on a non-medical model because PTSD at the end of the day is a normal reaction to a very abnormal situation. Most of the veterans attending Pathways served in Northern Ireland and the Falklands conflicts. It's common for the symptoms to go unrecognised for up to 15 years. Dr Hughes, who's a consultant orthopaedic surgeon, was diagnosed with PTSD six years after serving in the South Atlantic. I know that I have PTSD. My wife knows and she knows and the children know that on the 28th, 29th of May, every year, the anniversary of Goose Green, I'm like a bear with a sore head. But I know what is going to happen and I try and compensate to adjust for that factor and tweak my behaviour as best I can. The NHS in England and Scotland regularly fund veterans here. Unlike combat stress, Pathways also has a policy of treating soldiers with drink and drug problems. Many veterans returning from war zones get into trouble with the police and it's estimated that up to one in ten end up in jail. English probation services also refer clients. We then have to rebuild that individual and the importance of having a re residential unit is we can build a team of six guys who are all trying to recover and they all support each other and we restore their self-respect, they smarten themselves up, they're given a sense of responsibility about themselves and having done that we can then move forward with treating their underlying PTSD. Dr Hughes gave evidence at a recent Health, Wellbeing and Local Government Committee hearing at the Welsh Assembly, in which the future approach to mental health, including veterans' care, was discussed. He was surprised by the lack of available data about PTSD in Wales. They don't know the size of the problem, they don't know who can treat the problem, they don't know how many veterans are in jail, um, they're not quite sure how many veterans are in Wales. So I think she's pushing it a little bit to say that uh, mental health services can cope. Health Minister Edwina Hart said the Welsh Assembly Government did not fund Pathways because it was not a hospital and was not registered with the Healthcare Inspectorate Wales. She said the emphasis in Wales was on community-based care and there was an established helpline for people with mental health problems. Staff at Pathways say they often find themselves having to turn away Welsh veterans which is a shame because we're based here and we therefore do get chaps turn up on the doorstep or their relatives ring in um, and they ask us for treatment and we can't afford to take them on.
The demand for PTSD treatment has led to a crowded marketplace and arguments about different approaches. Talking to Minds is a charity hoping to provide mental health care here at the Golden Grove Mansion in Carmarthen, if funds can be raised to turn it into a convalescent home for veterans with PTSD. If we're looking at um, people engaging with combat stress or you know, some of these um, organisations that have been set up that are running CBT model, fantastic. If that works for somebody, brilliant. But what we're finding is we get guys coming to us that have been in the therapeutic pathways and even for up to sort of 25 years. Well, I'm sorry, that's not acceptable. Neil Christie, who's from Llanbedr in North Wales, turned to therapy with Talking to Minds after being on the waiting list for a combat stress treatment centre for 18 months. It was like a breath of fresh air from other counselling I'd experienced where I just talked about the negative emotions. It was as if I could go back there, look at that specific memory and not be emotionally, um, emotionally drawn in a sort of negative way. It was as if that negative emotional plug that was connected in, into my body was taken out. Because PTSD is still considered a taboo, Talking to Mind says it's treating serving military who want private help to cope with current conflicts. So they've come to us under the radar. For all intents and purposes, we don't know that they're still serving until they've told us afterwards. But they've gone back into the military, they've done further deployments of Iraq or Afghanistan, or, you know, or both and actually operated more effectively being there in a more stable mindset. Talking to Mind says it's producing evidence later this month to prove its treatment works and they've already helped 300 cases. But others say there's no cure for PTSD, it's about learning to live with it. I don't think there's an easy solution. Um, I know uh, it has been claimed that you can do a short course and be cured of PTSD. It's such a complex phenomenon and it's different for every individual. The extent of the traumatic events or events are such that you can't pick, say, right, this one off the shelf, that will suit you. The number of veterans with PTSD is predicted to rise inexorably as troops return from Afghanistan, putting yet more pressure on the NHS and charities. Meanwhile, veterans and their families will continue to struggle in a society that doesn't fully understand mental health issues. If he lost his arm or his leg, people would be more understanding, but when they can't see it, they just think he's a, he's a thug. But he's not. He's not a thug, he's just got problems and that are brought on by been out in Afghanistan and Iraq. Oh, it's still there, it's just you learn how to deal with things better, different coping strategies. And... To the guys that are suffering out there, just come forward, admit to yourselves that you have an issue, come forward, get the help, solve it and, and move on with your life. And you know, that can essentially be done. You know, you get this guilt, why didn't it happen when it was me? Um, so, but I'm starting to come to un understanding that the best way to honour him and others who died in that campaign is to, to recover as best I can from this and tell, the, tell their story. They'll soon forget their haunted nights their cowed subjection to the ghosts of friends who died, their dreams that drip with murder, and they'll be proud of glorious war that shattered all their pride.